Hey and welcome back! This is episode number 2 of this tutorial series slash crash course on Rust Noetic. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started! In the previous tutorial, you have installed and set up Rust, and now we're going to directly start a Rust node and understand what is a Rust node. So I have set up uh, my terminals like this, I have four different terminals here, and the first thing I'm going to do is to start a ROS master with ROS call. Okay, if it doesn't work at this point, make sure you have watched the previous tutorial and make sure that in your bash rc, so I'm just going to open the bash rc here, so the bash rc in your home directory, you have at the end the line which should be slash, so source slash opt slash ROS slash noetic slash setup.bash and once you have added that you source the bash rc again or you open new terminals. Okay so we have a ROS master here and we can start a node. Before we start a node I'm just gonna try to start another ROS master in another terminal just to see what happens. And we have an error here when we start a new ROS master. Why is that? Well this is pretty explicit. ROS core cannot run as another master is already running. Okay, so if you want to start a ROS master, you can only have one. So I'm going to have to kill this one so that I can launch a ROS master here. Okay, and now, all right, we have a ROS master running. I'm going to do clear here. And so now to see what is a node, I'm first going to start a few nodes. Okay, we're going to experiment a bit. And then I'm going to give you a more detailed explanation of what is a node. And let's start one actually, but where can we find a ROS node to start? Because we haven't written anything. Well, the good news is when you install ROS, you already have nodes that you can start. You have example nodes, tutorial nodes, and many nodes for different functionalities. So to start a node, we will use the command ROS run. Okay, ROS run to run a node. And then you will need to provide name of the package. So nodes are going to be organized in different packages. So you can have, for example, a node related to a camera driver, which would be in a camera package, and another node related to a temperature sensor in a temperature sensor package, for example. So ROS run, we're going to use RASPI tutorials. So this is the package. As you can see, I can use auto completion and then talker. Okay, so just run like this. I press enter. All right, and this seems to be a program that's gonna say hello world, so that's gonna print hello world in the terminal with a timestamp. If you want to stop the node, you can press Control c okay, just like you would stop an executable that you start in the terminal. So, as you can see, this node is, well, basically an executable, which contains then a program that's going to run. And in this case, we print something on the terminal every 0.1 second here. Now I'm going to show you something very important, is that first I told you that you need to start a ROS master and then you can start a node. What happens if I kill the ROS master, so I don't have any ROS master running, and then I start the node, so I try to start the node, I will get an error, you can see, enable to register with master node. Master may not be running yet. So the thing is, as you can see, you need to have a ROS master so you can start the node. If I start a ROS master here, the node is going to work. So it's going to wait for the ROS master and then it's going to work. So I'm going to press Ctrl C again to kill the node. Actually, let's start it again. And in this terminal, I'm going to do RQT underscore graph. This is a ROS tool. And let's just press enter to see what it is. This is a ROS tool. So you can put full screen or I'm going to put it full screen. This is a ROS tool that's going to allow you to have a graphical view of the actual ROS graph. Okay, so we are going to call the ROS graph all the nodes and topics and communications that are running on your computer. And so maybe uh, maybe you will have a view like this, so you can choose nodes only in group one or zero. Okay, that should be something like that. And you can see that here we have 
a node. So the node is named talker with some numbers here, some random numbers. You can see we have one node, one node in our application. Okay. If I kill the node here, I come back to RQT graph and I refresh, you have nothing. So nothing really impressive for now because this is just one node. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another node. So I'm going to start again the talker node and I'm going to start here. So I'm going to do ROS run, ROS pi tutorials again, and I'm going to do listener. So listener and I press enter. And we have some text also. So this is another program that's going to print something on the terminal. And as you can see, heard hello world with the timestamp. And actually this data is coming from the talker node. As you can see, if I kill the talker node, here we don't print anything on the listener node. I start the talker node again, and we kind of receive things and we print this on the listener node. So we have one program here, one program here, and this program, this node, seems to be sending data to that node. Okay, so let's go to RQT graph again, and let's refresh, and let's put uh, nodes topics all here with group zero, and you can see that, yes, we have a talker node, we have a listener node, and this talker node is sending some stuff to the listener node. And we're going to come back to that later. This is a topic, but we're going to come back to that later. All right. So you have your first communication between nodes. So between two programs in your ROS graph. So I'm going to kill that now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop everything. So let's do clear. Clear. And let's skip the ROS master. Now I'm going to start another node. So let's forget about the talker and the listener for now. Let's do ROS run, turtle sim, okay, and turtle sim node. I press enter and oh, we have a window, so a graphical window with a turtle and we also have some logs here on the terminal. So as you can see here, uh, before we had a node that were just uh, printing stuff on the terminal and sending data between each other. Now this node here is gonna pop up a graphical interface. Now let's do RQT graph again. And well, as you can see here, we have, so everything square like that will be a topic, but we don't care about that for now. We have one node here, turtle sim. So this is the node we have started. I'm going to start another node here, ROS run, turtle sim, and let's do, so you can press a tab twice actually to see all the nodes you can start from a given package. Let's start this one, turtle teleop key. Okay, and this one will allow us to control the turtle. So you need to, okay, let's put that here. You need to select this terminal here and type, uh, so use the arrow keys of your keyboard. And if I use the arrow keys, you can see here on this window, the turtle is moving. So make sure you click here again. And you can see I can turn and I can make the, the turtle move here on the window. And this window is actually controlled by the node running on this terminal. So again, it seems that we have a node here that is listening to the keyboard keys and that is sending data to this node here, which is controlling a turtle on a graphical window. So let's check that with RQT graph. You can click here on refresh. And yes, we have a turtle sim node that is that one. And we have a teleop turtle node, this one. And the teleop turtle node is sending commands here, command velocity, as you can see, to the turtle sim node. So this node is communicating with that node. So in the end, what is a node? Well, a node is basically any program that you can start. So an executable that's going to do stuff. That's going to use the terminal. So print something on the terminal, create a graphical interface. That can be also, why not create a web server in the node? Uh, use a camera with OpenCV. So any program you could create with code, basically.
And then the specificity of a ROS node is that it's simply so this program that also has access to ROS functionalities and ROS communications. So the nodes are going to do their stuff and they are also going to communicate between each other. All right, congratulations, you've already seen a lot with nodes, common line, and ROS tools with the RQT graph. And in the next tutorial, we are going to start focusing on writing your own node so that you can write your first ROS program. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full course named ROS for Beginners. This course contains six hours of content and will teach you everything you need to create complete ROS applications. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.